We might well be standing on the threshold of a new space race. Private companies like SpaceX and Scaled Composites are currently developing new vehicles which could form the next generation of spacecraft. This time around, these are financed by private companies, as opposed to the original space race, which was financed by countries. Could this herald a mass access to space? Some of the rhetoric you may read online and in news outlets might lead you to believe so. However, many people would propose that true mass access will not happen as long as rockets remain our main transport into orbit. Let's start our discussion of alternative methods by looking at the shortcoming of these conventional ones. Firstly, there are some fairly obvious disadvantages to rockets. For example, they take off vertically and they require expensive special infrastructure and assembly on site. They're not reusable. They're generally discarded after each firing. Given their cost, this is the equivalent of throwing away a chumbo jet after a single use and after it's only carried a couple of people. They are not reliable. Losses range between 2 and 5% which is a million times less reliable than a conventional aircraft. Many of these issues could be resolved if a launch system were developed which allowed horizontal takeoff and landing. In other words, a space plane. However, there is a related deeper problem also. The general structure of a rocket is shown below in the diagram. Fuel is mixed with an oxidizer and then burnt in the combustion chamber. The resulting hot gases are funneled through a nozzle to produce force or thrust. Let's think about the burning of the fuel. To make this as simple as possible, let's consider hydrogen and oxygen as the fuel and the oxidizer. These are what were used in the main engines of the space shuttle. The reaction is two molecules of hydrogen is burnt with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water. The molecular mass of oxygen is 32 and that of hydrogen is 2. So the relative weights in the reaction are 4 for the two hydrogen molecules plus 32 for the oxygen molecule produce 36 uh, for the two uh, water molecules. If we divide this by four, we get one unit of fuel is burnt with eight units of oxygen to produce nine units of the exhaust gases. So the oxygen required to burn the hydrogen fuel weighs eight times more than it. This ratio of fuel to oxygen is known as the stoichiometric ratio. In actual fact, the ratio used in real rockets is closer to four to one. In other words, the mixture is fuel rich. This is done for practical reasons in the rockets. But even so, the liquid weight to be carried on the vehicle of fuel is only one quarter that of the oxygen which burns it. A hydrocarbon fueled engine is in a similar situation. For example, one using aviation fuel, RP1, which is just paraffin or kerosene. For example, the first stage of the Saturn V rocket has a stoichiometric ratio of 2.5 to 1. And so here we have a critical issue of rockets. They have to carry their own oxygen. And yet for much of their journey, they are passing through the atmosphere and surrounded by abundant air. If we had a viable air breathing engine to replace the rocket engine, we would cut down both the cost and the size of the vehicle and its infrastructure. So with what we said earlier, here we have two requirements for a viable and practical mass access system for space. 
Firstly, a space plane which can take off horizontally and land horizontally. And secondly, an air breathing engine. The Scanjet is one of the leading contenders for this engine technology. And in the next video, we'll explain its basic principles.